Greetings everyone, my name is Atterville, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Mega Man Maker. During the last part, I covered several Virus Med levels, so in this part, I'll continue covering levels that were submitted to Nature's Rat, starting off with this one. Right back at ya, Ascending the Mighty Oak by Jess the Zag, with 37 plays and a score of 9. If you are interested in seeing what this challenge's rules were, check out the topmost link in the description below. Also as always, the full disclaimer of this entire LP series is linked in the description below. Also in the description are the timestamps for all the levels that cover in these parts, so if you want to check if your level is covered, expand the description. As long as all the levels featured in this episode aren't super long, this episode will cover the remaining levels submitted to this level design challenge. Thankfully Protoman doesn't take double damage here. This episode will also probably be shorter than usual, as I'll only be covering 4 levels. Check my placement in the stage is decent. About where I'd place it actually. This stage is also more generous in terms of life pickups. It feels like a somewhat easy stroll. The more difficult parts of this stage are on the left and right sides of this oak tree, as they take place over bondless pits.
It seems as we further climb up this tree, we're introduced to new types of challenges. Or rather, new types of gimmicks. Giga Boots. I really want to get that key. I'll give it one more go, then I'll just proceed onwards normally. But I can't reach it. Jumping down there is probably instant death, so I'll ignore it. It's probably placed there to lure me. Lure me into the teleporter, that is. In some ways, this feels more like a fortress level, as all these gimmicks are not exactly introduced in safe environments. In fact, it feels like two levels joined together. It's double or triple the length of a usual one. Oh goody, the introduction of spikes here. And jar blocks right over spikes. As I was saying, this is a fortress stage. So it assumes we understand how all these gimmicks and enemies work already. I think we're nearing the top of this place. I never heard this musical track before in this game. Oh, I see. Alright, I checked off screen. Woodman's weakness is the plant barrier. But let me try deflecting his shields back at him. I'm still surprised I never heard this musical track before. Yep, his better weakness is the leaf shield. I'm still surprised I never heard this musical track before. It must be buried deep inside the code as an easter egg. In fact, this sounds rather familiar. Is this an 8-bit remix of Game Theory's intro musical track? It sure sounds like it, or it's rather similar to it. This was a fun level, a bit longer than what I expected to be. Now, I would have actually covered another level called Legend of Nature by Mega Man VWXYZ, but it wasn't uploaded to servers, it was sent directly as a level file, but I don't have access to that. So instead, I'll move on to another level. Which is Snaky Scary Snakes by Slow Quick Man, with 31 plays and a score of 0. If VWXYZ eventually sends me the level file, I will cover it in a future Viewers Made Level episode.
Uh, that was super easy. But I need to be quick here. Well, not really that quick. So let me check and see what I overlooked. Are there any secrets? Is there more to the level I'm missing? Probably not, as according to the loading times, this is super short. Don't worry, I'll check out that teleporter very soon. I know I can make it. It's just to collect base. Getting out is a bit more difficult. But you can do it. So what's under here first? It leads to the base capsule, but this is completely unnecessary, as you can make the jump for the ladder anyways, defeating the whole purpose of the plant barrier here. So what's behind here instead? Just some meme capsules, so... That was this stage. I don't know what else to say about this level. It... just exists, I guess. In fact, out of all the levels I've covered during this challenge series, this is one of the shortest ones and feels the most rushed and messy. It didn't even go anywhere. The only interesting part was the boss arena, but even then it wasn't capitalized on. Speaking of which, next stop is... 61st place, Taco Man by Shoe Slime 64 Redux by Buddy One, with 15 plays and a score of zero. This level was disqualified as it didn't follow the rules. In fact, this entire level is a reference to the level Taco Man in Magmal 2. In fact, the level design is almost completed as in fact, the level design is almost completely the same. Scratch that, the level design looks exactly the same. The only differences are replacements of enemies that are missing in this engine. Poor timing on my part. And past this door, we would face off against Taco Man, who is essentially mostly sprited of Metal Man. Instead, we face off against Spring Man, one of the only changes in this stage. The point of this level design contest was to design a nature-oriented stage, and this completely misses the point, hence why it was disqualified. Nothing more to say about this stage. It is a slight improvement though, as the original had a quite annoying musical track playing in the background. Electric Factory. I already covered this back in episode 240, and it was also disqualified as it didn't follow the rules. Last but not least is Hidden Jungle Fortress by Kosaku, with 19 plays and a score of 4. Now, this would have been submitted to this level design challenge, had the designer not run into several technical issues that prevented them from uploading it to the servers. This is a remade version of the level they were trying to submit. Now let's see how it fares. 
As we saw at the beginning, I played through this level before. However, I'm playing through it again as the original recording got corrupted. Keep in mind that this is going to be a fortress level, so it's already assuming you understand how many of these enemies' gimmicks and mechanics work already. As evidenced with the introduction of the jet bombs taking place over a watery abyss, At least this Tama was not a pushover. These Joker Block challenges aren't that difficult, all things considered. At least for now. Later on in this level, they do get more difficult. I do like how there is a set of two safety yoko blocks below here. It appears that this stage's main gimmicks are yoko blocks, fans, jet bombs, and count bombs.
And I do say it feels like this stage is two fortress stages glued together. This one feels like the second fortress level. We first started outside and now we're inside the base. Overall, I like this level design. Nice gradual escalation of challenges starting out on the easier side and gradually getting tougher, and combining new gimmicks and mechanics and enemies all at the end. Thanks for the E-Tank as well. And our boss battle is Plant Man with a Rabot. Even using the Mega Boss 3 is pretty effective as he takes double damage from it. In fact, out of all the levels I covered during this episode, this one is currently my favorite one. It was the best design and the most creative. Good work, Kosaku. You deserve an upvote. So that was the last level that was submitted to this contest, or would have been. So out of all the levels that were submitted for this level design challenge, my favorite one would be A Flower on the Top of the Waterfall by JLRS13. My second most favorite one would be Swift True to Winds, My Fateful Little Robot by Lunaleaf. Now, I know Lunaleaf won this level design challenge, however I like JLR's level more, as the wind gimmicks in the latter level didn't really appeal to me. It was still a very well designed level, it just wasn't that fun compared to the previous one. So in the next episode, I'll be covering some more Veer's Mid levels. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. Toodles!